Hi everyone and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass the Geometry Common Core Regents. We're doing this one question at a time. Here is question 25. On the set of axes below, congruent triangles, rock, and rock prime are graphed. Describe a sequence of transformations that would map quadrilateral rock onto quadrilateral rock prime. So these kinds of questions take some creativity and visualization. We need to imagine we're taking this quadrilateral rock over here and transforming it into R prime, O prime, C prime, K prime. So we're going to have to use our imaginations here. So the thing I'm noticing is we can take this quadrilateral and flip it onto the X axis. So if we make a reflection over the X axis, so I'm just going to write that down. I know they don't ask for this, but for me, I'm going to, I'm, it's so much easier to visualize the next step if we draw out what a reflection over the x-axis would look like. So I'm going to draw that. I'm going to label this C sub 1. And then I'm just going to reflect each of these points. So this is our shape now that it's reflected in over the x-axis. So now let's look for the next thing. What else can we do? Well, it looks like this is reflected again now over the y-axis. So again, let's graph each point. So I'm going to use a different color so we can see it more clearly. And I'm going to label these k sub 2. I'm going to label these sub 2. So this point here would be k sub 2. Connect our dots and it looks something like that. So we're almost done with this, right? This is looking very close to this shape. But the last thing we're going to need to do is trans translation. So we're just going to want to move this shape up and over a little bit. So to see how many units we're going, notice we're just going to go one, two units to the left. Right, because this is our C sub two and we want it to become C prime. So two units left and then up one. So this will be x minus two and y plus y. So let's just graph that out so we can see our picture of what that will look like. So if we go two units left, one, two, and then up one, we'll end up c prime, k sub two, one, two, and up r, one, two, and up one, and then O, one, two, and up one. And you'll see that we end up with the shape that we wanted, that they're asking for. So this is our answer, reflection over x-axis, reflection over y-axis, and then a translation, two units left and up one unit. Question 26. In triangle CEM, C equals 3x plus 10, M e equals 5x minus 14, and CM equals 2x minus 6. Determine and state the value of x that would make triangle CEM an isosceles triangle with the vertex angle at E. So they want an isosceles triangle, and then they want us to find the value of x. So I'm just going to draw an isosceles triangle. So remember what an isosceles triangle is. It's a triangle with two equal sides. So that's what we drew here. We have two equal sides, and then the angle values are equal to. So they're telling us that the vertex angle is at E. So the vertex is always that top angle up here. They give us all this information. So we have triangle CEM. So let's just fill in CM. It doesn't matter which side we do it on because it's isosceles. So they're going to be equal. And it's saying CE is 3x plus 10. ME is 5x minus 14. And then CM is 2x minus 6. Okay, so we need to find the value of x. So all you need to do is set these equal to each other because we know they're going to be equal since it's an isosceles triangle. So we have 3x plus 10 is equal to 5x minus 14. And now we just need to solve for x. And we get x equals 12. And that's our answer. Question 27. 
A flagpole casts a shadow on the ground 91 feet long with a 53 degree angle of elevation from the end of the shadow to the top of the flagpole. Determine and state to the nearest tenth of a foot the height of the flagpole. So I'm going to draw flagpole. This is going to be a trigonometry Sokotoa question. So here's our flag. Here's the flagpole. And it's saying it makes a shadow with the ground. So of course we're going to have this right triangle here. So the shadow on the, along the ground is 91 feet long. So this is where the shadow will go, so we know this is going to be 91 feet long. With a 53 degree angle of elevation from the end of the shadow to the top of the flagpole. So the end of the shadow is over here to the top of the flagpole. So this over here is going to be 53 degrees. Determine the state to the nearest tenth of a foot the height of the flagpole. So we're trying to find this value, the height of the flagpole. Let's uh, write out Sokotoa, our trig functions, and see what values we're gonna need for this. So if this is the angle we're given, everything's gonna be in relation to this angle. So over here, we, in relation to this angle, we have the adjacent value, and then we have the opposite value that we're trying to find. So we wanna work with the trig function that has the adjacent and the opposite. So we're going to be working with tan. So this is going to say tan of 53 degrees is equal to the opposite x over the adjacent 91. And now we just need to find x. So we just cross multiply a little bit and we're going to get 91 times tan 53 degrees is going to be equal to x. And at this point we could just plug this into our calculator. Just make sure you're in degree mode, go to mode, degree. Okay, we're good. So we get this answer here. X is equal to 120.7610788. If we go back, they're looking to the nearest tenth of a foot. So we just want to make sure we estimate this to the nearest tenth, which is going to be 120.8 feet, which is our answer. Question 28. A man is spray painting the tops of 10 patio tables. Five tables have round tops with diameters of four feet and five tables have rectangular tops with dimensions of four feet by six feet. A can of spray paint covers 25 square feet. How many cans of spray paint must be purchased to paint all of the table tops? So there's a couple of different parts to this question. Uh, first, we're gonna need to find the area of each of these tables. So there's two kinds of tables, right? They have the round tables, they have five round tables. So let's see. So if we were to have a bird's eye view and we're looking down on these tables, they're round, so they're all gonna be circles, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five round tables, and they have diameters of four feet, each of them. So they all have the same diameter. So when we wanna find the area of a circle, we're just gonna use the formula pi r squared. And since all of these tables have the same diameter and are the same shape. We're just going to multiply it times five because we have five tables, one, two, three, four, five, so five tables. So now when we fill this in, we have pi times r, the radius, which is half the diameter, so it's going to be two squared, times five, which will give us 20 pi. So we found the surface area of all these tables, but these are the round tables. We also have to Look at the other kind of tables, they have rectangular tables. So there's also going to be five rectangular tables. So let's draw those out. And the dimensions they give us for each of these tables are exactly the same. They're all going to be four by six feet. So to find the surface area of a rectangle, we're just going to do length times width. And then because we have five tables again, that are the same size and the same shape, we're going to multiply this times 5. Length times width is 4 times 6, and then times 5 for the 5 tables, which will just give us 120. They're asking about a can of spray paint and how much it can cover. So before we do anything else, let's see how much total surface area we have together. So let's take the area of the circle, 20 pi, plus the area of the rectangles, 120, and let's add them together. So I'm going to use my calculator here because I'm going to want to figure out what that pi times 20 actually is. So we go 20 second pi 
and then plus 120. So this will add all of our surface area together. So total surface area is equal to this number, 182.831.8531. And now we can go back and look at that part of the question that talks about the spray paint. So we want to know a can of spray paint covers 20, covers 25 square feet. How many cans of spray paint will be purchased to paint all of the tabletops? So if one can has 25, we're just going to take this number and then divide it by 25. So since we have 7.31, we know that we're gonna need more than seven cans. So this is the number seven, but because we're gonna need seven cans and then a little bit more, we're gonna round up and say we're gonna need eight cans. If you got seven cans, you would still have 0.31327 of the surface area of one of these tables left over. So that's why we need eight cans. And then we'll have more than enough spray paint to take care of all these tables. But that's our answer. Question 29. Using a compass and straight edge, construct a mid-segment of triangle AHL below. So we're gonna use our compass and straight edge for this problem. The main point here is to construct two midpoints using a perpendicular bisector. So we're going to choose two sides and find the perpendicular bisector of each side. So I'm going to start with side HA over here. So we're just going to open our compass a little bit, bring it to point A, and just swing it around a bit to create an arc. Then keeping that same distance you had, bring it to the point to H, the other side of the segment and just make another arc. Notice that creates two intersecting arcs, then line them up at the intersecting point and make a little line. And then this is gonna be the perpendicular bisector of AH. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So bring the compass to point L, open it up a little more than halfway, and then create an arc. Now we're gonna keep the same distance on the compass and bring it to point H, creating another arc. And again, where these points intersect, where these two arcs intersect, we're gonna connect the line, and this will be the perpendicular bisector. So notice we have these two points on these lines. We have a point on HL and a point on HA, and this is where we're gonna draw our mid-segment, we're gonna connect these two points. And that's our answer. I have a bunch of construction videos too, so please check that out. I have a whole playlist of them. Question 30. Right triangle STR is shown below with angle T equal to 90 degrees. Altitude TQ is drawn to SQR and TQ equals eight. If the ratio of SQ to QR is one to four, determine and state the length of SR. So if we know that the ratio of SQ to QR is one to four. We can actually put this as X and four X. So SQ is like X, here's SQ, and then QR over here is four X. We don't know what X is. And what they want is the length of SR, which is this whole thing, which would just be X plus four X or five X. So to do these kinds of questions, what we really need to see here is three different triangles and know that they're all gonna be similar to each other. So when I say three different triangles, there's this big triangle, this little triangle, and then this uh, medium-sized triangle. So I'm gonna draw them all out. And when I'm drawing them out, I wanna make sure they're all positioned in the same way. So I'm just gonna draw this, the big one first, triangle STR. Here's triangle STR. So all we have, we don't have that much information. We have a five X and we know this is a right angle. So let's keep going. Let's draw the other two triangles. And when we're drawing them out, we wanna just make sure that they're all positioned in the same way. So here we have the right angle at the top and notice we have a shorter leg on the left and the longer leg on the right. So let's draw the smaller triangle, triangle TSQ with that in mind. So we want the right angle up top because they said this was an altitude, so we know this is gonna be a right angle here. And then we have the shorter leg on the left, which is S, 
and then the longer leg with T. And then we have these values here. So there's an X for QS and then QT has an eight. And now let's draw our last medium sized triangle, this triangle over here. And just keeping the same thing in mind, drawing the triangles in the same position. So we want that right angle up top, angle Q, and then the shorter side notices with T, which QT has a value of eight. And then on this side we have R, which QR has a value of four X. Focusing on these two triangles right here. So we're gonna focus on these two because they have the information we're gonna need. So we're gonna focus on these two triangles and notice that they are similar by angle angle. They both share an angle Q and they both have angle T. So by angle angle, these two triangles are similar. So I'm just gonna write that out. The triangles are similar. That means we could set up a proportion to find the value of X. We look at the shorter side, X, over the other shorter side, eight. Set it equal to the longer side of one triangle, eight, over the longer side of the other triangle, four X. And then we could just cross multiply. So before we get too excited, remember they're not looking for the value of X, they're looking for the length of SR. And if you go back, you'll see that SR has a value of five X, which is just gonna be five times four, which is 20. And that's our answer. So on the test, you probably just have to do this part, but I just did all this explanation. So doing this makes sense to us and we know why. Question 31. Line AB is dilated by a scale factor of two centered at point A. So this question, we're gonna be uh, looking at who thinks what and then saying who's correct. So Evan thinks that the dilation of AB res will result in a line parallel to AB, not passing through points A or B. So that's one option. And then Nathan thinks that the dilation of AB will result in the same line AB. Who is correct? Explain why. So these are, this is based on dilation rules. Dilations do have a couple of rules. And um, this is one you definitely want to know. So who's correct here? It's going to be Nathan, because when a line is dilated by a point onto the line, it results with the same line. So we just need to write that out. Look out for part three coming out soon. So if you're looking for more on this test, check out the playlist in the link below. And thanks for stopping by. Need more practice? Check out mathsucks.org for more questions. Link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Happy calculating!